Today we're taking a look at the spooky scary Spec Ops Space Marines to see what use we can try and get out of the Primaris Reavers. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, the strategy focus 40k channel, where today we're back for another Space Marine unit review, and this time we're going to be focusing on perhaps one of the less meta Space Marine units to see what good value we can get out of the Primaris Reavers. These guys were some of the very first Primaris Space Marines, following on very shortly indeed after the release of Indomitus, but basically ever since they've come out they've been really quite underwhelming on the board. They're basically Space Marines elites trying to be a utility choice, but despite several editions of the Space Marine Codex, I just don't think that Games Workshop have ever really been able to get them over the line. Still though, in their latest incarnation, at least they're a more interesting unit with a few cool options, even if they're certainly not renowned for being one of the Space Marines strongest units right now. In the video we're going to take a quick look over their datasheet, talk about their options in game and any buffs or synergies, and then talk about a few potentially strong squad loadouts, just some ideas for trying to get some good value out of them in certain Space Marine armies. First up though, let's start with their datasheet. The Reavers are an elite's choice for Codex Space Marines, they're pretty normal in terms of profile, core Primaris infantry with the stat line that's just the same as the Intercessors. The things that set them apart are their war gear, keywords and options. They are only 18 points per model, so are the cheapest Primaris infantry that you can field, which certainly isn't nothing to be honest. For 90 points, just having 5 marines on objectives with the option of transhuman physiology is going to be fairly hard to shift for that cost. For their weapons, the Reavers have two different options. They either get their special issue bolt pistols and combat knives, or they can swap that out for a bolt carbine. With the more melee focused loadout, the combat knives are a bit underwhelming to be honest. Most of the rest of the codex got AP-1 on their Astartes chainswords, these combat knives do look a bit weedy by comparison, and that was one potential way where they fell even further behind at the last update. It is a bit problematic for them ever being a decent combat unit, because it just makes them hyper specialised, they're going to be quite good at going through light infantry, but really fall down with anything with a 3 plus or 2 plus save. The special issue bolt pistol that it's paired with is kind of interesting, it's a 12 inch bolt pistol with AP-2, so at least that's a little bit better than normal for its smattering of damage. I don't think it's significantly better than the heavy bolt pistol that Assault Intercessors carry though. You're trading one pip of AP for 6 inch range, and that can be kind of significant on close range pistols. The other option is the bolt carbine, again nothing enormously exciting in terms of damage, it's an Assault 2 bolter essentially, at strength 4, AP 0 and damage 1. Again it's not going to do masses and masses of damage, but at least it can spit out a bit of anti-infantry fire, even if you're advancing about the board. I think both options are usable, I might lean towards the bolt car by myself, just because I'm a bit underwhelmed with the melee buff that the combat knife brings. After you've chosen your war gear, you get the option of either a grapnel launcher or a grav shoot. Those cost 2 points each, they both give you a deployment option, the grapnel launcher gives you outflank, so that's setting up your reaver unit somewhere on the edge of the board, kind of similar to an improved strategic reserve, and the grav shoot just gives you free roam deep strike, so they can go wherever they want. Obviously that's flatly better than the Grapnel Launcher, so the Grapnel Launcher has the additional selling point that you can ignore vertical move distance whenever you're moving, advancing or falling back, which I think is quite fun to be honest, you can ping them all the way to the top of tall buildings and things for no extra movement. That can be potentially a good way to keep them safe, or a fun way to drop down on the enemy from high up. I think of the two of these, I still probably prefer the grab shoot though. I feel that pinging around the buildings sometimes might be handy, but it does seem a bit niche. If I wanted a deep strike option, I think it would be good to be able to set them up exactly where you want them to, and not just let your opponent screen out the edges of the board if they want to. I don't think for 2 points each is necessarily an auto include though. If you are taking the deep strike option, you're giving up the ability to be one of the cheapest Primaris units in the game, so it just depends whether or not you want the squad to have that utility. Abilities wise, they get the standard Space Marine things, then a couple of extra special rules. Angels of Death will give them Shock Assault and Combat Doctrines. With 0 AP, Combat Doctrines are quite relevant for them, for getting an extra pip of AP on those AP 0 weapons. They have one built in datasheet special rule called Terror Troops, which means that you're minus 2 leadership when you're within 3 inches of a model with this aura. Leadership sometimes can be relevant in 9th edition. It might occasionally cause you an extra casualty or two here or there but still it's just not really very reliably good against the majority of factions to make it too worth a consideration I think. You might be playing against an army that's almost entirely vehicles, or armies like Thousand Sons or Tyranids who are going to ignore the mechanic most of the time. Finally they do have the Phobos and the Shot Grenades keyword, both of which allow you to do a couple of stratagems that we'll get onto in a second. Overall I describe the Reaver squad as a Primaris utility unit, very similar in price, statline and abilities to the troops, but getting the option to buy Deep Strike 
the minus two leadership thing, and access to some important stratagems. Before we compare them to the other troops though, it's worth knowing what else the Reavers can do with buffs and synergies, and perhaps one of the main selling points in 9th edition of Reavers are access to three fairly interesting stratagems that a lot of other units don't get. First up, for one command point we have Shock and Awe, a 6 inch debuff ability that you activate in your shooting phase, you activate it when the models themselves shoot, but you don't actually have to use this as a shooting attack. You pick one enemy unit to debuff, and they can't fire overwatch, can't set to defend, and get minus one to hit. Overall, that's certainly usable for one command point. The no overwatch could be very relevant against certain enormous enemy units, particularly if you're just about to charge something that's fragile and hard hitting into them, even if it's just the Reavers themselves to tie it up for a turn. The minus one to hit could also potentially be quite good, particularly if it's on a really strong enemy unit. Throwing this on some of your opponent's best guns could certainly be worse. However, I do think that the issue with this one is the range. Reavers don't move all that fast. If you're deep striking, then you cannot use this. And maybe if you did desperately want to deploy a shock and awe stratagem, you might well be better with a cheap and cheerful land speeder storm. Genuinely a pretty decent space marine utility unit, one that's quite nice for pinging onto objectives and being somewhat annoying to remove. Generally, I'd say that this is fun, but maybe a little bit opportunistic, and not really one that you can plan around that easily. I'd say perhaps the best option they have though is the 2CP1 Terror Troops. This one makes those Reavers scare the opponent so badly that they forget to hold their objectives, a 3 inch aura of removing obsec, and also gives you a chance to make an enemy action fail if they're halfway through doing one. I think the action thing is super situational, but removing obsec does seem like it could be quite reliably useful. I guess the theory is that if you have both this Reaver squad and an enemy unit with obsec on a primary, using this stratagem might make the difference between whether you hold it or whether they do, and that could easily give you a 5 victory point swing. I think this would be a bit more useful if your Reavers could get obsec. In the vast majority of Space Marine armies, they don't, but it could pair really nicely with a Space Marine character with rights of war to give them obsec. Perhaps Death Watch Kill Team Reavers, although I have seen a few people use the Reaver Lieutenant as an alternative to Reavers for this. That way you can actually have the same model who can use this stratagem, as well as being a source of objectives secured all by themselves. I can see why people might go for that as the better value. That way he could perhaps be a dedicated buffing piece to stronger units, and then throw down this trick if it's going to make the difference on scoring the victory points. Finally, for one command point, we have the Phobos one, Gorilla Tactics. This one allows a squad that's greater than 6 inches away from the opponent to go back into strategic reserve. Maybe it's not quite as unique to the Reavers, but I think it's still a selling point for them. I'd say the best use of this is usually going to be late game. Maybe you need to get some models into another enemy table quarter, or harass some light troops on a backfield objective, or maybe just pop up and do an action. It's a really quite useful ability to have if they survive that long, but I would bear in mind that it's equally a selling point of the other Phobos, things like Infiltrators and Incursors and Eliminators. Still though, these three slightly opportunistic stratagems I would say are one of the best selling points of Reavers. Chapter wise, I think a few chapters will do a bit better with them than others. I feel like Blood Angels could be an interesting choice for Reavers. They do get easier deep strike and charge, which works well with their unique options, and those low strength attacks might be a bit more threatening in melee too. White Scars I think work with them really well, maybe starting them on the board and using their advance every turn, and then shoot and charge as necessary once you get towards the enemy. Imperial Fists are worth mentioning with anything with Bolters. Space Wolves have plenty of other melee tricks and can get the Assault Doctrine early very easily, that could be quite nice for AP0 Blades. They do also have their own version of Reavers as well in the hands of Morkai, the super specialised anti psyker unit, costing a little bit more but giving you a minus one to cast's aura, and being more accurate and damaging when they're hunting witches. Perhaps though for the very best for Reavers in competitive play, Death Watch have them as a very nice option within their Spectrus kill team, as we'll talk about in a second, pairing Infiltrators with Reavers is a really potent combo, which we'll talk about in some squad loadouts at the end of the vid. You can pair them with characters as well, but I think in general they're some of the cheapest and most expendable Space Marine troops, so you're likely best focusing your buffs elsewhere. Perhaps most interesting are the rights of war for the obsec. You could pair them opportunistically with a chaplain for deep strike and charges. Some of the Phobos Librarian spells could be fun to zoom them forward far faster, for example. And there's a few fairly powerful Vanguard Warlord traits that you could use for them. Maybe getting some sneaky redeploys with Lord of Deceit or potentially some move shoot move on the go with shoot and fade. In general though, I suspect that you're not going to want to support them too much, probably rights of war and obsec might be the best bet if anything. Finally, they do have access to a bunch more generic stratagems as well, transhuman physiology for more survivability, gene vault might for more melee power, and maybe more niche things like uncompromising fire or auspex scan. 
Again, like the characters, I think you're usually going to want to focus your command points elsewhere. But situationally, if it's super important just to kill one enemy unit or to survive one round of fire, it's good to have a bit of pop-up damage or durability as you need it. With those benefits taken into consideration, here are what I'd say are the main strengths and weaknesses of a Reaver squad compared with something else. Their main selling points are that they can either be cheap or offer you deep strike options on fairly cheap space marines. They have their terror troops minus two leadership aura, and they have their three interesting stratagems, though all of them can be potentially used on other units if you want to. The main downsides, and probably the reasons that they don't see play all that much, is that they're not normally obsec or troops, both of which are pretty bad disadvantages when you're say comparing them to things like intercessors or incursors. They don't help you fill detachments, and even if you spend the 2 CP on the pricey terror troops, a lot of the time you might just have been better being off obsec in the first place. On top of obsec and troops, having worse damage than most of the troops really isn't great. An intercessor with an auto bolt rifle will give you an extra 50% shooting damage, and there's massive trade offs for other things too. You don't really want to compare their melee to any of the elite slots, or even assault intercessors with their AP-1 and fight twice option. And if you're looking compared with the other Phobos marines, not being able to forward deploy is quite a big blow as well. Unfortunately, despite having a few genuine unique selling points, you can just compare Reavers to a whole number of different space marine units, and come to the conclusion, yes that would probably be better for the role that I'm trying to fill. Still though, not every list has to be completely optimised, and I think if you run them in some of their stronger forms, they don't really have to take too much away from a list whatsoever. I'd be most tempted to take one or two small units of five as utility units, but certainly no more than that. They're a bit of a luxury, seeing as they don't do much damage or fill detachment slots. Perhaps some more normal space marines, maybe something like a 90 point barebone squad in white scars with bolt carbines could be interesting. The white scars seem quite good with that loadout, as they are with the intercessors with the auto bolt rifles. Advance up the board each turn, shoot and then charge if necessary, hopefully eventually in the White Scars Assault Doctrine, where even Reavers will be scary. Maybe you could have them moving up alongside other more dangerous threats, things like Blade Guard or Vanguard Vets, bully any light infantry that they can get their hands on, and be ready to use Terror Troops to de-obsec an enemy unit if it's going to make the difference between you holding a midfield objective. If you're lucky, perhaps you could even inflict an extra morale casualty or two, and put their actual Terror Troops rule to good work. It seems like they could be worst uses of 90 points, it is a really cheap unit for Space Marines. As I mentioned earlier though, I think perhaps the strongest way that you can run Reavers right now are in a Death Watch army. Their Spectrus kill team adds a lot of options and counters some of their weaknesses. If you take a Spectrus kill team, say with 6 Infiltrators and 4 Reavers, you can split the squads up into 2. The Infiltrators can go off and do their own thing. They're a pretty reasonable troops choice to take with denying all that deep strike. And then that leaves you with a really quite small and efficient 96 point unit with 4 Reavers and 1 Infiltrator in. They are troops, so they do have Obsec, which is great with their stratagem. The Infiltrator gives the entire unit Omni Scramblers, so you basically got a unit of Infiltrators on a massive discount. You get the other slightly situational Reaver stratagems. And on top of that, the Infiltrator even gives you the Smokescreen keyword, so you could get them a minus 1 to hit as well if it was absolutely crucial that they survived a turn. They've still not got an enormous damage output, but costing less than 100 points for all that utility is great, and I think you could easily justify a unit like this to hold down a home field objective in plenty of Death Watch lists. Finally, I guess you could just use them as a cheap deep strike option for objectives and actions. 100 points with grav shoots really isn't all that expensive. I think it is quite rare to see people use them in this way though. They are competing with quite a lot of other options. You could have Vanguard veterans come down and actually have good movement and good threat once they are down. Or for just 20 points more, Bolter Inceptors dropping down and unleashing 18 Strength 5 AP-1 shots. They'll still be able to do things like actions though if you need them to, so I guess if that's all you want out of a unit, then the Reavers could be a worse choice. So anyway, I hope you found the discussion at least kind of interesting, and hopefully giving a few ideas for how Reavers could be used in-game. I'll be interested to hear your thoughts down in the comments below, and if you've had any success running them in 9th edition yourself. I would argue that when they're run best, they're not really all that far behind the other choices, but I think it's kind of hard to argue that they're optimal. If you've enjoyed the video, feel free to subscribe to All Specs Tactics, where I will certainly keep these regular 40k videos coming. We'll certainly have plenty more for the Space Marines going into the future. Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that All Specs Tactics does have a Patreon page, and you can find that down in the video description below. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, including seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with the chance to win some really big model kits each month. 
If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, then the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.